three, two, one, and we're back from commercial break. Welcome back, everyone, to the Big Man's Report Live. Here I am, your host, Blake Rosell, on News Talk 1400 and 92.3 WOND. Thank you all for joining me tonight. I have a wonderful guest on great, great conversation, and we're going to get back to in just a, a short moment here. But like I do always, I like to thank my sponsors for, for their support and continued dedication to my program. And not only that, but I like to support their businesses as well. And, you know, they work so hard, and they're great spots. So when you're down in this area, um, you have to make sure that you visit their their restaurants or supermarkets, wherever it may be, or their business because, hey, we all help each other out, and that's the best way to do it, right? I always like to thank Castle Supermarket of Margate, all the delicious baked goods, um, their groceries items, household items, whatever you need right on the island, not too far from here in Margate City, New Jersey. Stop on in and see my man Howard. Tell him that I sent you from the Big Man's Report Live. And you'll have everything you need there at Castle Supermarket of Margate. South Jersey All Sports of Northfield, boxing classes, indoor rentals, batting cages, all sports, brand new turf field facility. Stop on by, sign up for some Ninja Warrior classes uh, and many other things involved in South Jersey All Sports. As a part of Blake Gymnastics Training Academy of Northfield, call for class for boys and girls, also birthday parties, tumbling, and much more at Blake Gymnastics Training Academy. As always, Thomas C. Roselle. Attorney at law, or any legal matters, anything that you have that you'd like to uh, have a question or anything regarding um, legal matters personally, uh, talk to Thomas C. Roselle at tcrlaw at gmail.com. Shoot Tom an email. Happens to be my father. Best in the business, always around uh, doing his thing. Um, God bless him and, and his continued success and work uh, in the legal system. Um, Mazda's Farm Market and Italian Coffee House of Northfield. Mazda's Farm Market has been located a uh, local treasure for South Jersey since 1960. The Clemente family took over and expanded to a seasonal farm market and into a year-round destination. Stop on in and see my man Gino. Tell him that I sent you for a discounted rate on any product you buy. Gino, you're the best. Mazda's Farm Market. Stop on in. And last but not least, Angelo's Fairmount Tavern of Atlantic City. Dinners, banquets, weddings, and catering events. Stop on in and see my man Angelo. Angelo's Italian Homestyle Atlantic City Restaurant has aged like fine Italian wine. Celebrating 87 years of dining excellence, stop on in, grab a great meal, throw a birthday party, have a banquet. The best in the business, Angelo's Fairmount Tavern in Atlantic City, New Jersey, is an Atlantic City staple along with everything else in Atlantic City. So now let's get back to the program here on the Big Man's Report Live. I have a wonderful guest here with me in studio. I'm glad he made the trip down. You see him in many action-packed movies, big movies. Um, you know, we're going to talk about some things that he's working on currently, things that are coming out in the, in, the, in the future, people he worked with, and some some great stories that he has to tell about the acting world and the act, acting business. So i like to welcome my man again, Christopher Marmando. Got That's it, Marmando it. that time. Marmando, you got it right. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> um, but thank you for coming on tonight, Chris. Thank you for having me, Blake. This is an honor, brother. Uh, absolutely, and I thank you. And this is, you know, I was looking forward to this show. And the second half of the hour here, we talked about your life in the first half, talked about some projects, um, you know, getting into some projects. But now yeah. we're actually going to talk about this project. So I've been seeing publicity for the Grave End series. I've actually had the pleasure of having some people on on my program uh, that are going to be acting in Grave's End. Uh, Vicky Batetto, yeah, to, name, to name yeah. a few. Um, shout out to Vicky Batetto yeah, shout and out, team. Uh, but... Also, I, you know, looking forward to watching this, all right? Yeah. And, I, and I want you to tell me a little bit about the grave, you know, work on the set and when it's going to be coming out and where we can find it and some moments in the set that some great people you have you had the pleasure of working with. Yeah, so Gravesend, shout out, without a doubt. Gravesend series season two. Um, going to be going to Prime Video, of course. Um, there'll be other networks that haven't been announced yet. Um, but it's going to be season two will be coming out sometime very soon. We don't have a definite date yet, but we're going to be um, doing a carpet on the 29th. So we're going to have a premiere coming out. It is going to be fantastic. I mean, I have been always talking about this show. We, we started doing this a couple of years back um, where we started getting acquainted as far as the show goes for myself. I wasn't in season one. Uh, season two, I play a, a, a character called Gaetano. So Gaetano comes home from prison, and he's the right-hand man of the main character, which is Benny Z, which is played by writer-director Will, um, Will DeMeo. So when Will had called me and said, you know, Chris, I want, to, um, I want you to be a part of season two, I'm like, absolutely. I would love to be, this is right up my alley. It takes place in Brooklyn in the late 80s era, 
which the late 80s, whether you know it or not, I'll explain it. That was the height of what the show is about. It's about the mob in the 80s and what laws and what rules and regulations really took place. And it was so a time where you knew that there was rules and regulations. I don't care who you are, what you are, you just knew the rules and regulations. You don't talk about nobody, you don't say nothing about anyone, you don't talk to the police, you never talk to the police. Oh, yeah. There is that law. If you get, like, you know, the joke aside, if you get caught with it red-handed, you still say that's not me and I don't know who you are and who's next to me or who's right of me. You just knew, because that's the way you were raised. And which gets back to why acting wasn't a, a was a frowned upon. It's, it's not for you, you're gonna either do this or you're gonna do that. Right. So this show brings out the late brings out that era, and it brings it out strong. And the the actors that are part of this this entire cast and crew is amazing. This this cast and crew, other than of course the, my own that I wrote, produced, and directed, this was just probably one of the best. And the reason why I say to one of the best is because everyone on this set. Everyone from A to Z, Z to A. And it's not just to sound good. Oh, I'm not leaving anybody out. It's the truth. Right. I am Gaetano on the set. When I come to the set, they know Gaetano's there. Why? Because I start jamming. This is how we do. Everybody yeah. starts getting up here. Yep. So we start bringing it. And when you get to set, I mean, producers, directors, camera crews, G&E, lighting, everything, every actor for, for a wardrobe, PAs, everyone goes, Guy Tano's here. They don't even know my name. How about that? The majority, I bet you, if you really asked, if you said Christopher Momando, they might say, who's that? Right. You say Guy Tano, they're going to go, oh, we love Guy Tano. <laughs> That's the funniest part. So I don't even say, when, they, when I, they're like, Guy Tano. And I'm like, Guy Tano's in the house. So that this show gives a lot. And it's going to be something that I'm even telling you that I, I'm so excited to, to see it because I haven't seen it okay. so I'm going to see the first two episodes on the end of this month and when they premiere it and then I'm going to obviously when it's live I'm going to see every episode so I can even see what it looks like yeah. but I, I can't get the, the smile off my face as you can see um, I can't wait to see this it's got so much promise because I think personally that what DeMeo has here is something that's not out there you had a Sopranos it's done with yeah you have Boardwalk Empire, it's done with. You still have the Godfathers of Harlem, it's changed up a little bit, but you still have that, but that takes place in what, the 50s and the 60s, yeah. right? So you have no shows that shows Brooklyn slash mob genre, this is the one. So you have so much to go off of, and God willing, it goes as well as I think it could go, and you're gonna get endless endless amounts of seasons out of this yeah you know because you have the want and you have the desire and you have the people that really want to do it because again remember i told you with sacrifice you have not every actor is making a ton of money and not every actor is retiring off of one season right. it doesn't work that way you have your bigger names that they're going to get paid bigger money that's the way it goes but not everybody, when you're just getting in this business where you become a, a season one or a season two, that you think, oh, now he's gonna be making a million an episode. It's not even close, right? All right? It's not even close. It's not even close to anything of, you could just do that for one job unless you make it to the next level. So there's a lot of give and take. And the give and take is Gravesend is a lot of give and take because you sit there and say, I'm giving it all. And then when, when, the, when the time comes, yeah, I'm gonna take it. I'm gonna yeah. take it and we're gonna go to the next level. And I look so forward to it. And it's going to be something to see. Yeah, and I, I've been seeing it, and I, I, I get just telling your passion that you're really excited about this. Oh, absolutely. And it is something to be very excited about. I mean, I've, I've seen uh, some trailers. I've seen some some footage on what it's going to be like. Yeah. And I'm personally very excited to watch it and yeah. check it out. Yeah. Um, and the best part, too, is what, what one of the things that I see and what I notice, like especially um, it looks like a lot of these guys, the, like we some I mentioned earlier in the show, the camaraderie between a lot of you guys. Like I'm sure you come on the you were going on the set and you guys laugh a little bit, you have some oh, good yeah. you have some good times. And that's what just makes it more of a real life feel. Yes. So I mean when you're in acting, you we know we know, you know, you know it's acting, you know, uh, somebody gets killed, it's just acting, right? right? But also you almost kind of if you if you can make it feel natural, you can make it feel like it's a real life scenario where 
boom, you boom, 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 you kind of wake up and it just feels easy to you. And not that acting's easy, but right. just the idea of, man, it doesn't really feel like I'm working today, but it just feels like I'm having fun today. Oh, absolutely. Right? How many times do you wake up and have that feeling in your career? Oh, that's, that's me, and that's, that's exactly, that's perfectly said, because that is me. Um, you know, there, there's a thing. Uh, the show Entourage is one of my favorite shows, one of my favorite all-time shows. Johnny Drama, who's Kevin Dillon, plays the, the, the character Johnny Drama. And there's an episode, he's in his trailer, he's getting his neck massaged, he's reading his script, and they bang on the door and they go, Drama, we're going to be met pulling an all night, bro. We're sorry, it's going to be a late one. He goes, don't be. He goes, this is what I live for. See, that is, whoever the writer was on that part, I'd give him a hug and a kiss because, or her a hug and a kiss, whoever wrote that, because that's the way it's supposed to be. This is what I live for. Don't tell me, don't worry about if we're going into overtime. Don't worry about we're going into, oh, it's going to be a late one, because this is what I want to do. And when I always tell everyone when they complain, whoever complains, I'm like, you know, you're supposed to, you're complaining, but you're supposed to want to be doing this business. This is what goes with the territory. Right. And how do you know if you're ever coming back here? So shouldn't you want to embrace every minute of it? Absolutely. I know I do. Yeah. I embrace every film show. I embrace every minute and make the best out of everything and while I'm there. And anyone who knows me will say the same exact thing. Yeah, and also too, you want to take you want to take a little bit of credit for what you've done, right? Absolutely. You want to be proud of it. Absolutely. Even if it was something that wasn't maybe the biggest you thought it was going to be, but you worked hard to get That's there. That's right. And you you did it, That's right? Correct. You can say you did it, you can say you accomplished it. So be proud of that, oh, right? Yes. It's a always, thing. Yeah. always. Anything you do, if you're putting it at all, you're you're 100 percent, 110 percent, in, and you're doing it with every great intention. Be proud. Yeah. Be proud because that's what it's about. It's about seeing your work, knowing I gave it my all. Hmm. Baseball, football, any sport. There is not going to be a loser. There's going to be a loser, right? Yeah. Somebody's going to lose. But are they losers? No. No. You gave it all. You lost that game. But you're far from a loser. But there is a loss. So right. when you're going into something, you give it all you got, you won. You know, you won. And if you truly prepared the right way and gave it what you have, it's all, all a compliment. Yeah. It's all a compliment. And and just that journey to get there is the, is one of the biggest things. Yes. And that journey is not easy by any means. No. But the fact that you feel like you are you got there and now you're going to work at your craft, it's one of the best feelings. Absolutely. So, Chris, I, I mean, we're talking about all this movie stuff yeah. and acting, and I, and I listen, I and I and I love it. I think it's so so cool to hear your story and things that you are proud of, and things that you're accomplishing, things that you're you do have in the future that are coming up. When you were young, I'm gonna take it back for a quick sec before sure. we get into your movie. When you were younger, who was a, was anyone of an inspiration to you? I mean, maybe it could have been a family member, but was anyone on the maybe of an actor that you thought? man, I really idolized that guy or that woman. I mean, was there someone that you really wanted to get you into acting? Because you told your brother, you said, when I'm home, I'm going to be an actor. I was, um, my brother could tell you this, I could recite any film. He would throw out 30 films, and I could start it from, from Jaws to Rocky to Wizard of Oz to Raging Bull to all the movies left and right. My mother would say if he would only have studied the same way he recites movies, <laughs> he'd be a friggin' genius, you know. And we would laugh, and i go, yeah, but I don't want to go to school. I, I want to do movies. And, and laughing aside now, that was one of the starting things. But when I, yeah, growing up, if I would watch, you know, it could have been anything. It could have been from the Ralph Macchio Karate Kid, right? It could be to Rocky, Sylvester Stallone, Anything with a De Niro raging bull. I have a funny Rocky story to tell you once you're finished. Okay. okay. And it could have been anything. It could have just been when you're watching. I remember growing up and I seen Growing Pains, Kirk Cameron. And I watched him on the Show Me That's Not Again. And I'm watching him going, I, I could do this. I could do this. And yeah, I could do it. I could have done it then too. But I waited. I ha I wa it happened to be the time of my life it happened. So I take it with the God grace, and that's the way he wanted it. And But when watching it, I said, I know it. And it's not to sound like I think I'm better, but I think that when I watch something and I watch a show, I watch a film, I go, I could do that. I know I could. Yeah. I know I'm, I'm capable of doing that. So it's a, you have to have confidence. So, yeah, I used to watch that. All shows, 
Didn't matter what shows. It could have been the odd couple, the honeymooners. I could have did that. Yeah. I'm not saying I'm better than Jackie Gleason. I'm not saying feel you know um, a Tony Randall. I'm just saying I always said I could do that. I could yeah. do that. And nobody would believe it because like ah oh, please. Growing up, if you would have told somebody, oh, you know what, I'm in the 80s, I'm going to make a million dollars a year, two million dollars a year, you know what they would say, my whole family? Yeah, all right, well, what bank are you going to rob? They yeah. couldn't see it. Right. So just because they couldn't see it didn't mean it couldn't happen. Mm -hmm. And anyone, when I tell people, I mentor a bunch of people, and I tell them, no, I'm going to tell you something right now. Your mother, your father don't even know your true talent. So you can't go even to them for the true advice, and guess what? I'll hold with that for the rest of my life. Because even myself, I can never, I can give the best advice to my daughters, but they know themselves better than anybody, and they know their truest talents. And when somebody breaks out in talent, do you think the mother and father really knew that Einstein was gonna be a genius? Did they know that Justin Bieber was gonna be Justin Bieber when he was coming out of the womb? They started seeing gradually, and they're like, oh my God, what do we got here? This is, this is that, elite status right and your son your daughter plays sports everybody says oh they're gonna be they're gonna be pro but no they're not the majority is not right but the ones that make it guess what you know what it took for them to get there mm -hmm. so there's a lot that goes with it so watching all those shows that's where I got the drive and the ambition and then reciting film after film and just playing. And me and my friends were always like that. We would recite Goodfellow lines. We recited Bronx Tale. And Bronx Tale to me might be one of the best all time films for me. Yeah. And and it's always hats off the chairs because that is one of, to when I look at it, Bronx Tale, the authenticity is what starts with me. Right. It, he did it as so, the, the authenticity was so perfect that it was actually scary. Okay, it's actually scary because it was so perfect. Yeah. And growing up in our neighborhood, every three or four blocks, you had 25, 30 guys hanging out. Now we would say is, where is that? Where do these guys come from? Yeah. But in Brooklyn in our day, every three to four blocks on a corner, there was 25, 30 guys hanging out in the corner. Yeah. So you go three blocks, another 30 guys, four more, four more blocks, 30 guys. On one avenue, how about there, there's 13th Avenue, there's 14th Avenue, there's 18th Avenue, there's 11th Avenue. How about all those avenues that you just see guys after guys? Yeah. And you go, Mika, where they come from? Right. But they're there. So, you know, it's it, there's a lot. Authenticity is important. And Bronx Tale, oh. And it's, you literally took the words right out of my mouth. And you know, and you know all the, a lot of the Bronx Tale guys personally. Oh, absolutely. The cast, and Chaz, Chaz himself, Chaz his wife, his daughter, yeah. his son, yes. When I watched that movie for the first time years ago when I was a little kid, I said, I said, it, some, I mean, even I was younger, I didn't really understand okay. everything yet, right? Yeah. But as I got older, I watched it again. My dad would watch it. My dad's family's Italian, so I watched all that stuff and all the good fellows and the Godfather. Yeah. And I said, as I got older, I said, wow, this is like, this This feels like it's like it's real. Like, the authenticity of making it real, yes. you know? You know, like the neighborhood guys and all yeah. that stuff. I mean, I, it was an unbelievable film, yeah. the way it was. You know, and it really told it, like, how, how it was, how it was in the... 60s and the doo-wop on the corners and Absolutely. and I actually had the and he's a good friend of mine I had the pleasure of having Lila Broncado on my show yeah, back in December yeah. and we stay in touch now we talk a lot and you know it's just that whole entire movie was just played out to a T of yes. the authenticity factor it was perfect yeah it was perfect absolutely perfect like, they can't make another movie like that no it's hard they, to make another movie like that again shouldn't even try yeah. because <laughs> they, you're not gonna if, if you try it's like that you're trying to copy it right he did it. it. It's like certain films that you don't ever, you're not going to get a Rocky and then all of a sudden you're going to get a, 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 a Roni. You know, now we got Roni's a boxer. No, yeah, it's done. Yeah. It's done already. Yeah. Leave it alone. Let, let it be. Let, it, let, is, let a Bronx Tale be a Bronx Tale. Yeah. Let Rocky be Rocky. And that's a wrap. Exactly. They are what they are. That day per, they was perfect. It was just perfect. Yeah. Rocky, so my dad's family's from South Philadelphia. So okay. you hear me talk about South Philly, and I told you in private conversation. And shout out to South Philly, and you know yeah. my man Tony Luke. Yep. Love Tony Luke. Got to come down to the city and uh, hang out. But Sat, my dad's family's from South Philly, and we always, and he told me a story about Rocky, and I'm like, Dad, no way, no way. So actually his cousins okay. um, are, in, are in, so his uncle Joe, his great uncle Joe, was the gentleman who sold Rocky, this the, the 1976 Pontiac Trans Am on Broad Street. Uh, he was a car salesman. That okay. was my dad's uncle Joe, and then my dad's cousin Jody was played like the teen hood, Little Marie. 
Oh, when, I love that. When he yeah. when Rocky was hey, walking. Rocky. Hey, yeah. Rocky. Hey, Rocky. Yeah, that's yeah. that's cousin Jody. So that's little great. little little thing about uh, acting in my dad's side of the family, and I thought it was so cool when he told me that. But Rocky is is one of those kind of films again, just one of those old the school underdogs. Yes. Yeah, and and think about this. Really think about this. I've said it a million times. I, if Sylvester Stallone was sitting right here, this is what I would say. The reason why it's such a beautiful thing is not because of it became successful. It's because I bet you every dollar in my pocket and whatever else I have, I bet you that everybody must have told them, oh, you're a joke. It's a joke. Get out of here. Take a walk. They say, oh, yeah, some guy who's going to talk. Nobody believes in anything until it's a, it's, till it's a hit. Then it's a genius mode. Yeah. But the fact of what he did, and he's one of many that have done it in life, that have taken a concept and made it happen, that's why when when you have a, an idea or a, or a passion for something, you never give up on it. Yeah. Because everybody could tell you it's gonna never happen. And then be careful with the ones that are telling you, when it, the, the ones that say, oh, it's never gonna happen, don't do that to yourself, because you know what they could be doing? They could be silently hating or afraid Absolutely. if you're gonna bust out. Yeah. Afraid if you're gonna make it to another level because they are so insecure yeah. that they are gonna give you bad advice. That's why be careful who you even ask advice with in this business. Because let me give you advice on this business. You ask somebody advice, you know what they could say? Oh yeah, I think you're doing great. Let me tell you something, yeah, this guy, uh, Blake, yeah, don't do anything because you know what he's telling me? It's, it's backstabbing to the nines. Right. And don't ever underestimate it. That's why that rule is, you know, the less is more theory, say nothing and do. And then later if it's done, then post. Yeah. But I posted something on the Instagram the other day because there was a reason. It starts out with me crying and it gives the, the momentum of one day I woke up. I used to feel like I went away. I did what I did. I paid for my crime. But then I can't get back into the work I want to do. So you start feeling like, in a sense, oh, poor me, oh, oh, poor me. No, it's not poor you. You made a choice that went against you. Yeah. So you got to accept it. Right. That's the way life is. And I'm not just accepting it because everybody thinks that I'm in a better position. Because that, that little film that I did, that little Instagram thing, will show you how it's not that way. Mm -hmm. There are times that if my wife was sitting here, she'll tell you, yeah, he, he will go through these times where he's got one Chris on his shoulder and the other Chris. The other Chris is saying, no, buddy, you, 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 it's time to chalk it up. It's over with. You, you, you're not going to get to that De Niro status, to that Pesci status, to that Pacino status. And then you have the other one going, no, shame on you to even listen to that other guy. That's that's the you know the love hate. Right. And that's the good and evil. So when you want to go for something, don't let something get in your way if you have that that desire or that that dream. And it's not just to sound good, it's true. That's why it starts off me crying. But then I yeah. woke up one day and said, you know what? It's time you stop pointing a finger and saying, oh, but it's time to start doing. Yeah. And when you start doing, your whole attitude changes. And you know that phrase, attitude is everything? Mm -hmm. That is true. Energy, high energy. And we just heard the song, high uh, energy. And you start listening. That's Alicia, right, that sings that? Alicia, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Love that. I remember from the 80s, yeah. from the roller rink days. Great music. Great music. And when, you, when you're when going for something, good, you got to go for it. I mentor a younger generation and tell them, your own family members can't tell you what you're capable of doing. Mm -hmm. You have to take it right. and say, and Sylvester Stallone, getting back to what I go off, he took something that was probably looked at and frowned upon 80 ways under the sun. But guess what? The one that said yes he created everything from it. Yep, absolutely. There's the thing I'm saying is there is the there's the blessing of it. Mm -hmm. Never ever think that this person told me no that it can't be a yes. Yeah. I'm telling you straight. That's the most important way to look at it. Yeah, absolutely. And we do have a couple minutes here left, Chris. Um, but I do want to I do want to mention um, Judge No Book, which you yes. wrote, produced, and directed. Yes. Coming out. Tell my audience a little bit about that. Okay, so it's a film that I wrote 10, over 10, 11 years ago I wrote it. It's the first thing I did before I started acting. Obviously, it took me all these years to get it done. Why? Because it was the right time to do it. I wrote it, I produced it, I directed it. I had what a casting crew. I mean, everybody. From everyone that was on the set, you have so many people that were amazing. Judge No Book has to do with Don't Judge This Book by its color. 
I'm an Italian American. Don't think I just stay or I'm just friends or family with just Italian Americans. It's about the heart. Right. It's about where you come from as far as where your motives are. Do you have a motive? If you have a motive, you got to go. If you're true, if your eyes read right, if your heart is right, then you will always be in my circle no matter what color. Does it matter to me? Yep. My grandfather used to say, if somebody called you up and said, somebody hurt your son or your daughter, are you going to ask them, uh, well, if it was an Italian guy, are we going to let him go easier? No. Does it matter? So judge that. Don't judge this guy by thinking only one way. He's about the love and the heart, the respect, and what you give, and he gives it right back because that's the way I've been my whole life. Yeah. And it's a great story. It's spiritual. We, cut, we shot 85% of it in February. And we're shooting two more days in the summer in Brooklyn to finish it up. We have a bunch of people, I mean, from Lenny Venito, Gary Pastor, Bo Deedle, Andy Salvo, Tara Westwood, Malia Varela, um, Gino Caffarelli, Sonny Marinelli, who I casted first out of the whole thing. And, and I don't want to leave anybody out. There were just so more. Tom Modrison from Oz was coming down working with us. I mean, there was Josh Williams who co-directed it with me. Uh, so Till Newman, who's, the, who's from the New York Film Academy, He's the very first one that I met in this industry. Wow. And he's the one who took me to that next level. And he was my director of photography, and he was phenomenal. Everybody that saw the clips have said, wow, this, this shot was great. And, and it was. And so many people contributed. Um, like you take Saul Stein. Saul was amazing. This guy, Robert Pravante. Robert was somebody that I took out of. He never did film. But I used to sit here and we used to recite line after line. I go, you're coming in the next film with me and I'm going to give you a role. Right. And you're just going to be directed by me. You're going to get it where I'm going to give it to you. And boom, here he does delivering lines. Um, Andy DeSavo played my mother. I mean... Doing the scenes with her was scary because it was like being with my mother. Letitia Roll. We had Nimrod Federal Hip Hop played. My my brother, Colin Kilkenny. So many people from For Life on with ABC wow. that were on it. So we had so many people. And of course, I'm going to be missing names and I'm forgetting names because that's just what I do. But everybody from A to Z, Z to A was amazing. And it just brought out so much on the set. Bo Dino turned around and said in front of everybody, and he said, just want to let you know something, everybody. I've been with Marty Scorsese for 35, 40 years. Here's your younger Scorsese. Gary Pastore goes on up late at night with Johnny Patenz and said, they go, Gary, you worked with all the big names. You know, Marty Scorsese he goes, Marty's great, but this Chris Romando, he's the up-and-comer. And the salvo told my brother on set, you know your brother's the young Scorsese. And he laughed, and, and Ann goes, yeah, you're laughing, but I'm not. And he goes, no, I'm not laughing. I, I agree. She goes, he is such a visionary. When And if you watch my Instagrams, even I get um, a little bit impressed on when I'm in the zone and I'm, yeah. I'm focused on talking to the actors. Sure. And I'm in the scenes. Yeah. But when you hear them say it, it gets pretty like, it, I get very emotional with it. Right. Because it's such a, an honor to hear ones that were with Woody Allen films. And the sound was with Woody Allen. Uh, every movie you've been in, she's been in. Bo Deedle has been in every Scorsese film. For him to say that on set, come on. Yeah. I even said to him, come on, don't mess with me. Steve Van Zandt, red carpet in Norway. Never forget this as long as I live. They said, Steve, who is he? Was the first thing, one of the first things I did called Lily Hammer on Netflix. And they were all taking pictures, and he says, you don't know who he is now. One day you'll know him to be a huge star. But he goes, um, he's in our season two, a couple of episodes. He has all talking parts. But let me be more straight to the point. If we ever did another Sopranos, he goes, I'd still be Silvio, but he'd be a new Tony. And I said, yeah, you're right. And he goes, no, you don't know what you've got, kid. So when you hear it enough, yeah. you start to say, Amanda Sante, as I said it to you before. And you had Vic on the show. Vic and me yeah. had scenes in, in Miami. I mean, it was just priceless, you know, priceless. That's great. And it's very, that that's ironic. You said Lilyhammer. I do remember watching it on Netflix yeah. a couple years ago. The first original Netflix yeah. series. Wow. And I and was in Norway for that one. That's great. Yeah. An accomplishment to you because I did watch a lot of that. Season uh, two. I'm in episode a, seven and eight. I was a big Silvio Dante fan oh, from the Sopranos. So. And I'll give you a great one of Silvio. When I got my, when I got to the, seat, to the yeah. set, I did the audition and I thought it was a joke. And it was, it came from the New York Film Academy. So I sent the audition Woman, Eve Tagli, gives me the, the shot. I get to the set. I see Steve Van Zandt first time. I go, Steve, I want to, oh, my God, I'm thanking you so much. And he went, no, 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 no. You, uh, you know, you, uh, you, you're you near the audition. And, uh, you know, you're going to do great. And you look like uh, you're going to go out there and break a leg. And looking at you, you uh, probably broke a couple. And I go, hey, I don't know what you're talking about. And he goes, listen to me. And I'm going to put my hair on, you know. And he went in the back. 
And then just to be in his presence, being a, a Sopranos, a Silvio fan, I mean, come on. I mean, it's great. It, 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 these, are the, these are the perks in life that you say, wow. Yeah. You know, wow. Yeah, and it all comes with, with your hard work and your success. Yes, amen. So I can't believe we ran out of time, but Chris, oh. I want to thank you so much for coming on the program. And before you go, just tell our viewers and our audience, you know, where they can find you on Instagram and your website and yeah. all these upcoming works you got. Yeah, definitely get me on the Instagram. I'm I'm pretty um fluent on there. Chris underscore Mormando, M O R M A N D O, more of a man. And um, get me on there. You'll also see some motivational pick me ups. Uh, Monday morning pumps, I pump it out. But you'll also see the videos that give the motivation of what and how it's on the set, behind the scenes and things like that because those are important to see for others that have never been on a set before you get to see and i'm yep. throwing out some bloopers out there it, it's a lot of fun it's a lot of fun yeah and we're looking forward to a lot of your work and 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 a great show and i look forward to doing this again with you in the future absolutely and hopefully looking forward to maybe working on some things ah, with you in the you. future yes you got to come in on the set yep. we get you a part we we make <laughs> you make a debut i told you you're a gentleman so you got great energy, great attitude, and that's what it's about. You know, it gets you to the, it gets you to that step, right. and then it's on you. Yes. You know, then it's on you. But I appreciate you again, Chris. Awesome conversation. Great. Made a new friend here. Absolutely. Great guy, great gentleman, family man, and he's just a hard worker, passionate. Go give him some love on Instagram and his web and his, you know all his works. Stay in tune with what he's doing. You'll see what he's doing on my page and. We'll be sharing each other's stuff, but look yes. forward to some things in the future. Chris, thank you again for coming on tonight. And thank you, and shout out to the one and only Nikki Chicky 74 my wife, Nicole. She is literally my best friend and go-to in life. That's it. <laughs> we'll catch you next year on the Big Man's Report Live on News Talk 1400 and 92.3 WOND. Everybody have a great weekend, and we'll see you next time.